Actually, y'all, this may be the best piece of coffee I've never made. Wow. I really outdid myself today. Hey y'all, it's Kaylin. Now, as some of you may know, I held a barbecue at my place to celebrate Memorial Day a few weeks ago. And the number one thing people were asking me wasn't where I got my outfit, because I knew I was snatched, but they wanted to know why my food tasted so good. Now, y'all are lucky, because today I'm going to share the top secret recipes to a few of my signature dishes. It's time I teach the children about spices and sauces and properly preparing your meats. Get a notepad ready because you're about to learn a whole lot. Let's get cooking. For the dish we're gonna make are baked beans. Now there are many types of beans. Black beans, red beans, my favorite, baked beans. Now the benefits of beans are a good source of protein and fiber, low in fat and calories. Now you can't just throw your beans out the can and think they finished. I know that a lot of people put on the label baked beans, but baby, you must season with your sauces and your spices. So now we're gonna make us a baked beans. So right now I got some bacon cooking over here on the, uh, on the, in a cutoff again, damn it. So let me show you what we got in here. So we got beans right here, right? Now this is just straight out the can. Now I'm gonna put this last can. So you need three cans of uh, pork and beans, okay? You're gonna do about one cup of uh, barbecue sauce. This time I'm gonna use Jack Stack barbecue. I like to use Casey Masterpiece in my baked beans as well because it gives us a darker kind of look and it kind of gives that baked kind of look. So we're gonna add some more liquid smoke into here. So boom, boom, boom. Straight out the smokehouse, baby. One teaspoon of chili powder, y'all. I love to throw some honey up in here. We're gonna make a little honey barbecue. Now this is raw, unfiltered honey. I like it because it gives a little graininess to it. And I think it's sweeter than regular honey, but it's a little harder to push out. And um, my muscles are a little weak from the gym this morning, so bear with me. Ooh! Okay. You see what our beans look like? See how it's brown, that color? That's a great color. Tastes like some good beans to me, baby. So now that we have our baked beans on our stove top, we have one ingredient that is very crucial to your baked beans. That is brown sugar. Now, you're gonna put four tablespoons of brown sugar in here and that's really gonna give it some sweetness to it, okay? Oh yeah, look at that brown sugar swirling up in there. Let's taste our sauce. Wow, wow. That's perfection, baby. Woo! We eating good in the neighborhood today. All right, so now all I need to do is take my bacon and cut it up and throw it in this pot of baked beans, and then that is going to make it and seal the deal. Let me say this for me. So you're gonna wanna put your stove top on about medium high heat, okay? And you're gonna cook this on here for about 30 minutes because pork and beans are already cooked, so you're just gonna let the flavors cook into the beans, but this is all you need to do, so I'll see you in 30 minutes. Mm. Ooh, they're perfect. Sweet. Got a little kick to them. That's it. I need to open my own restaurant, honestly. Barbecue! Boom! Come on. Stay tuned. My homemade hamburgers. Do I have a name for it? No, but that's fine, you know, because I ain't released a cookbook yet. Maybe one day. Right now, we have in this bowl our regular old hamburger patties. We're gonna make them into one big old meatball, okay? Put a little hole in the middle, some onions. Do I know how much onion in this? I don't know. But for this hamburger meat, all I know is I need a little bit boom, boom, boom. So the reason why I never know what the measurements are is because if you've been in any black household, we don't measure our ingredients. We just already know how much to put in there. So that's kind of how I operate. Woo, that's some strong garlic. You're going to uh, want to do one teaspoon of garlic. <laughs> OK, so some stuff you can measure because, you know, I got one teaspoon of garlic. I know I like garlic. I'm going to mix this all up together first. Now, I do this because most people, you know, like to put on their toppings after they just have the meat in the uh, seasoning. But I think when you put in the onions and the garlic, it adds more flavor to the meat and when you cook it. And then the onion is actually like caramelized and cooked through and grilled as well. And I really like cooked onions more than I do fresh onions. Now, the next part we are going to do is we're going to season the meat. So let me get a paper towel, wipe off my hands, because I want to have clean hands when I be touching stuff. No, I did not need to wash my hamburger meat, because I know folks gonna be like, you didn't wash it, Kaylin. Don't worry, I only wash my chicken and my veggies and my fruits, okay? Mind your business. I'm gonna use this KC Masterpiece because I'm from Kansas City and this is one of my favorite barbecue seasonings. But then I'm also gonna mix it with this McCormick Grill Master Smokehouse Maple because I love that maple and that smoky kind of taste. I am not one 
to tell people to be like, we'll use four tablespoons of seasoning when it comes to this kind of seasoning because I look at the meat and I look to see if I can actually see the seasoning. I believe that you have seasoned the meat well enough when you can see the seasoning in the meat. If you can't see the seasoning, you didn't season it enough. I threw the paper towels on the floor because I was told that it looked tacky. That's on top. You know, my mama used to always tell me, clean as you go, clean as you go. I was never good at it though, clearly. It smells absolutely wonderful. And you wanna make sure when you're mixing the meat, if you're using your hands, you gotta make sure that you mix it all together so you have to really pull from the inside out. Okay, so as you know, I'm from Kansas City and Kansas City is a big barbecue city, right? So I put barbecue sauce on everything. And what I do to my burgers is that I actually put the barbecue sauce in the burger meat when I cook it. Today we're gonna use Gates, and this is the sweet and mild. The thing about using these barbecue sauces, and the reason why I'm trying to put Kansas City on the map is because you don't have to live in Kansas City to be able to access these. You can actually order them online on each of the establishment's websites. That is how I get mine, actually. Even with Jack Stack, you can actually order barbecue to be delivered to your house already, and all you have to do is cook it. Oh, smells great. Reminds me of home. I like it to be smoky, I like the smoke. So I have here some liquid smoke. And this is really gonna give it that smoky flavor. A lot of the seasoning in the sauce gets into the meat as well. So then you really help not making a bland burger. Look at me being a chef. <laughs> Somebody better give me a cooking show. And we gonna make us some burger patties. And we gonna stick them all up in this uh, frying pan. You hear it squishy? Here, I'll hold it close to my mic. Yeah, that's what it needs to sound like. Flatten it out, get us a little patty. So here we go, we're gonna cook this patty. Is this on? But you wanna make sure that it cooks enough on this one side so that when you try and flip it, it doesn't fall apart. It smells great, it's looking good. Now I know there are people out here that don't eat meat and I'm just gonna tell you this, meat for a barbecue is essential. Now no disrespect to the vegetarians and the vegans. Woo! Look, them onions are starting to caramelize. Right, so our burger is complete. So then we're gonna place our burger here on our bun and you can put whatever topping you want. I prefer barbecue sauce. Now I'm gonna use the Casey Masterpiece because I like to mix up the barbecue sauces. And also the Casey Masterpiece has a very thicker con uh, consistency than the Gates, so it's easier to stay on because I hate it when like stuff be falling off the burger and you're trying to eat it. Slap that on top. Well, everybody, that is how you make Kaylin's world famous uh, hamburger. It ain't really world famous, but you know, you get it. People in my neighborhood like it. <laughs> now we are going to move on over to dessert. And I'm gonna make something that many people have always asked me to make and wanted to know the recipe. Well, today is your lucky day because today Kalen's gonna make his world famous peach cobbler. I've been making this peach cobbler for many years. In fact, when I still lived in Kansas City, people used to pay me to make them peach cobblers for the holidays. So I'm very well versed in this recipe. So what I have first is a bowl of peaches. Now this is three pounds of peaches. Now let me tell you this, I don't use fresh peaches because I think that sometimes they are not ripe enough and I think it's just a lot safer for me to get canned peaches and then I just strain them and rinse them out. And the first thing we're gonna start with is our cornstarch. Now what the cornstarch is going to do is that it's gonna make sure that our juices are thickened and that it's not just running all over the place. Cause a runny cobbler is not a good cobbler. Nobody wants that. Now we're gonna add one cup of sugar. You don't want a too sweet cobbler either. Ooh, what kind of sugar is this? This some bougie sugar. Ooh, look at them crystals. Bougie sugar. Now we're gonna do two teaspoons of lemon juice. Now we're going to go over here and we're gonna put in the most essential seasoning. But most people just put nutmeg or they just put cinnamon and they call it a day. I do allspice, cinnamon, and nutmeg, and pure vanilla extract. You know, I'm all about the smokiness and I think allspice has a very smoky kind of flavor to it. Christmassy, very warm kind of feel, but it works good in a peach cobbler. Now this is a very bougie vanilla extract. This is actually a Madagascar bourbon vanilla extract. Ooh. I know a lot of people that put liquor in their uh, peach cobblers as well. I've never done that before because I don't like to drink. The aroma is just absolutely wonderful. It's so warm, it really makes you feel like you're just back at home. See, no one taught me how to peach cobbler, but I based my peach cobbler recipe off of actually Patty LaBelle. And what I did was just, I just took her recipe and then added my own little, you know, pizzazz to it. Now what I'm gonna do last is I'm gonna add honey to this as well. <clears throat> Ooh, Lord, this is making my muscles hurt. <clears throat> That's enough, I ain't got time to keep squeezing. I've done it again. Now, the last thing you're gonna need is a half a stick of butter. You're just gonna cut it up, you're just gonna throw it up in here. 
So I prefer to use salted butter. Get that butter evenly divided within the peaches. Right now, I have a pie crust in the oven in a pan and that is cooking because we're gonna put a uh, pie crust on our bottom and we're also gonna put it on our top. Don't we love a versatile um, peach cobbler? So now we have our uh, pie crust that has been cooked in this dish. We're gonna put our peaches in here and we're gonna put this crust on top. Oops, sorry. I used to make my own crust, but that take too long. I ain't got all day. I have seen some people use croissant dough, and I tried that one time, but I didn't know you were supposed to roll out the croissant dough first. It overflowed, the dough was real raw, it was just trifling. People talked about me. Pop, 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 pop. So now that the crust is on top, you're gonna take the cinnamon. Yeah, 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 that gives a little flavor to the dough as well. Boom. And now you're gonna set your oven to 375 degrees, and you're gonna pop this in there for about an hour, and then, baby, bon appetit. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is, my world famous peach cobbler. Straight from the biggest peach himself. Now I really don't have a peach. I'm working on it though. I've been working on my squats. Now let's just cut into this and get a little taste. Ooh, look at that crust, it's flaky. Oh yes. I like to get a lot of crust, y'all. Actually, y'all, this may be the best peach cobbler I've ever made. Wow. I really outdid myself today. Somebody better call me. We about to give me my own cooking show. Child, yes, please. Oh my God. Now that's how you bring it to the barbecue, baby. Hope you enjoy learning my recipes, but do not share them with anybody else, okay? I'm just kidding. If you make any of these, tag me. I wanna see what you're cooking, even if it makes me hungry, but don't you be adding extra to it. Comment below if you have any go-to barbecue recipes, and I will see you all next Saturday. You wonder what happened to my food, my crew ate it, cause it was that good.